Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're gonna finally look a closer look at Helium-3 on the moon. So let's dive right into it. So what's the science behind it? Now science is very simple. We just want nuclear fusion. Now nuclear fusion has its energy from E equal to mc square. Basically the mass that you are converting directly into energy, you will get a lot of energy from few milligrams. So that's the whole idea of it. Now question is why the hell we want to do that with that, that many extra steps. One simple reason, we have nuclear reactor. They work, they are safe, everything is awesome. But biggest problem with them is radioactive waste and not to mention human stupidity, if you have seen the Chernobyl. So what happens with radioactive waste is when, once we break down fusion, basically, uh, pardon me, fission, we take uranium, we break it down. We take plutonium, we break it down. Now this is a very easy process. A schoolboy can make this reactor and uh, basically American Boy Scout has actually did that. So that is very easy. However, the byproduct, what, whatever we get after that breaking, what, that's the dangerous part. You have a reactor, it's making energy, everything is awesome, it's not polluting the air. However, what you get here is basically all the pollutant concentrated form. So, this is so hot that we literally like once the reactor is done with the fuel the spent fuel is put into cooling pools where we simply cool it once we cool it then we have we can barrel it up and this could take upwards of two to three years so it is a ludicrously complex process and not to mention infinitely dangerous basically if you bury it somewhere and you forgot about it you dug it off, uh, out after a thousand years it's still poisonous you dug it out after ten thousand years still poisonous you dug it out after one million years it's still poisonous so you have to understand this we really don't want this this is like we are uh, the question between nuclear and um, basically coal based is basically what we like to pollute you pollute something that you have to make sure you never touch in a million year or the atmosphere that we all breathe in so you can understand it's really not a good choice then question comes okay then why do we want to deal with nuclear uh, system now nuclear fusion does something better it takes two light element instead of uranium heavy element it takes two light element and merges them and make them big so basically you take hydrogen uh, uh, hydrogen plus hydrogen boom you get helium and neutrons out of it now here's the thing this is part that many people kind of ignore is that reactor is still radioactive you have to understand that that reaction process is highly radioactive and is giving free neutron which can act as a uh, ionizing radiation is gonna destroy anything that it touches neutrons are very powerful basically alpha beta gamma gamma is like nitrogen uh, nitrogen I'm saying <laughs> neutrons territory it can go through lead that's why we need insane amount of shielding around nuclear air. however the benefit is that once you turn off the reactor it's done there is no uh, lingering source that will taint us for thousands of years you just have to make sure you don't touch the reactor basically it's like how we do not touch the engine while it's running in a car engine and things like that it's the same but you have to understand it's still radioactive it's like you still have to have radiation protection and all that but it's not uh, like a dangerous if anything goes wrong you shut down the engine done radiation evaporates so when you are talking about that it's still giving off neutron somebody came up with the idea what if we combined helium as in like helium specific isotope of that helium 3 to hydrogen normal garden variety hydrogen you will get uh, basically helium 4 and you will get a lot of proton now here's the interesting part we are getting proton instead of neutron why is that interesting proton is a charged particle so how we deal with a neutron is basically we have neutron we put it into the wall basically the lead wall whatever we have as a shielding and it heats up neutron is like a high energy particle it's traveling through the lat uh, crystal lattice of the structure and it's heating it up now that heat is uh, directly cooled off by uh, basically running water that water becomes steam that steam turns a turbine then you get electricity so a lot of extra process here's the interesting part once you have proton which you will get from helium and uh, hydrogen system helium 3 specifically you get in proton now proton and magnetic field they don't like to mix together now once you utilize that ability you can directly convert a reactor into a battery directly like this is a reactor once it's happening you're getting electricity out of it directly you don't have to do anything you don't have to heat water you don't have to have the steam cycle so basically you will bypass all of that that is the interesting part so and the radiation while the reactor is running is also low now not zero this is critical aspect it's not like there won't be any neutron produced so that is why it's like classified as low to no neutron present now no neutrons is like way too much but generally it's set from 90% uh, proton emission to uh, basically 
70 percent but you never will go like 50 50 you will always have more protons that's why it's called a neutronic you lack of neutrons so this is very awesome you will get something that is very easy to handle in terms of radiation you will get direct conversion that is also super awesome that means for per uh, gram of fuel spent or that won't be correct terms basically per um, kilowatt of energy is there like let's say 10 kilowatt energy was there in tritium tritium cycle you're gonna get basically one or two basically 10 to 1 to at best or maybe even more practical terms it's generally classified as like first generation reactor will barely have like if 100 watts of energy is created you will get like 20 at the other end best best case electrical energy I'm talking. however with a proton cycle you're gonna get like almost 100 is created you can extract upwards of 90 upwards of now of course 60 70 is still achievable very easy but 90 is like mathematics is not stopping you so it is pretty interesting so given the it will require us to use very small amount of fuel and the reactor system will be very simple even though reactor size will remain the same it's just that upcompanying garbage of uh, having the steam cycle will be removed so that is why it is so interesting and and the fact that we can easily stop the radiation that's also very crucial so that is the a neutronic part a neutronic fusion google it and uh, here's the reality aspect of it we can only do that in bombs so to give you a context of it you have to understand bombs come in two main flavors basically you have atom bomb and you have hydrogen bomb so fission is atom bomb any child can do that that is like your final project if you are doing nuclear physics that would be your final university project make nuclear bomb it's quite easy that's childish we can do that now here's the deal when you're talking about hydrogen bomb nobody can do that because hydrogen bomb is so hard the ignition temperature of hydrogen bomb is so hard we use a actual nuclear bomb to trigger it basically when you hear people say thermonuclear device that's what they are referring to basically a hydrogen bomb has a miniature atom bomb inside it to trigger it that's kind of temperature and neutron density we need to ignite it this is not an easy thing atom bomb Tom Dick and Harry can do when hydrogen bomb that's ludicrously complex ludicrously dif difficult now if it is that difficult for bomb where we just wanted to for uh, do it for one instance you can imagine how hard that would be to do it in a reactor so why it is so hard to do in a reactor because even though uh, it is hot we should be able to do it but here's the problem it's very high the temperatures here are so high that people literally don't use uh, any measurement basically they will say 15 million they will not say degree Kelvin, fahrenheit it doesn't matter at that scale at 15 16 million it simply does not matter so that is why temperature requirement is ludicrously high we have multiple reactors all of them reach, uh, you know achieved fusion but here's the deal none of them reached break even basically they were not doing enough so you can have a laser ignition facility where you have like petawatts of laser power poured into a single point and you're getting like very high temperature awesome here's the deal you dumped a uh, one gigawatt of power and you barely got half megawatt tokamak designs many tokamaks are, are built around the world and they are working like you can go there people are working there uh, people put in the fuel they turn on the plasma and you see all the fancy light show but what's happening is just that fusion was done it's just not enough basically you put 100 megawatt in the heat output was barely 50 megawatt and you have to understand we don't have 100 percent conversion efficiency so it must generate multiple times more the heat output so we can get actually some amount of break even so we are way far away from that now in terms of scientific uh, measurement we generally measure these things in very fancy way and i want to simplify it so if you have tritium and tritium isotopes you mix them up and to achieve fusion you need ignition temperature same way you need ignition for a bomb you need ignition for a reactor now in reactor we use plasma magneto confined plasma to achieve that ignition temperature what is that temperature 13 just go with that 13.6 is needed 13.6 uh, and this is like tera kelvin per volt it's ludicrously complex element just go with that now that is translates to in terms of degree celsius for 25 million degrees celsius that's 13 and i'm talking on a molecular level Dritium and helium-3 cycle requires 58. That's the one thing that I don't understand. Like we can't even reach 13 properly, reliably, and break-even point. And people want to build a reactor that requires 58. We are not successfully reaching 13. And it's not like okay, we just have to push a little bit more. Let's say, let's say we reach a point where like some engineer come around, like this is a new design that's supposed to be better than tokamak design because it's twisting, the magnetic field is twisting. So it's supposed to give more cross section, so more area where fusion is supposed to happen. So this finally supposed to break even uh, but again i do not know right this i'm he hearing this sort of thing from oh we are building this reactor we are building this reactor first why they are calling it a reactor if it's not doing break even it's just call it an experiment so 
this is supposed to reach that on a molecular scale basically all each atom that is traveling in the plasma confined hot plasma should reach that 13.6 now if it reaches that fusion occurs but if it does not reach a fusion will not occur so far we can achieve fusion we just not achieve enough of it basically it's like one or two is we need billions of them we are getting one or two so that is why we haven't reached break even now if we are having that kind of difficulty we have been doing this for upwards of 50 years the amount of money put into this is in trillions of dollar actual trillions of dollar and actual countries from china to india to america to australia to every tom dick and harry is putting their money into it we haven't even reached 13.6 how the heck people expect 58 like this is one thing like oh we just mine helium 3 how are you gonna use it how are you gonna ignite it like that literally translates to you're gonna need a hydrogen bomb to trigger uh, basically a helium bomb that's why we don't have helium bombs so that's the whole point we don't have the technology and here's the interesting part if you have that kind of reactor that can generate that kind of energy uh, why not just go a little bit more go to 66 of course it's a much lesser jump than 13.6 to 58 but if you jumped to let's say 66 there is a, a isotope of lithium lithium 6 you can just mix it with one proton and that's it you're getting a neutronic reaction again just that lithium you don't even have to go to moon to mine it lithium heck if you increase the temperature a bit more you can uh, basically trigger a reaction from uh, bromide, bromide one, bronze, uh, something like with B, basically. And but that requires one uh, one hundred and twenty three. So ignition temperature is the critical password. That's why, like, if we can't maintain ignition temperature at thirteen, how the heck people expect to, to maintain at fifty eight? Like thirteen, give me fifteen. Like say that okay, we have successfully completed fifteen, and you have to understand, tritium, tritium is the easiest thing. That's why we we are not just taking two random hydrogen and mixing it. We simply can't ignite it. Two random hydrogen, like normal your uh, hydrogen that you will get out of electrolysis, they can be acting as a nuclear fuel. We just don't have the reactor that goes hot enough for it to trigger. So, if you can't do that. How the heck people expect us to like somehow magically trick deuterium, somehow magically find helium-3 and just put it in a reactor and voila. Of course, the conversion efficiency is interesting and that will allow you to have some extra benefit. But here's the, we simply don't have the technology. Mathematics does not allow it. Now, mathematics would be wrong. Say, think of it this way. Engineers haven't built a reactor that is hot enough. That's it. That's all you have to think. Like, if somebody tells to you, like, I want to build helium-3, ask them to build a tritium tritium cycle first because that requires less than 15 and they want to go less than, like, more than 58. So, you have to know, that is why the science is not solid grounds now where the heck helium-3 is coming from and why the heck it's on the moon not on earth you have to understand sun takes a lot of hydrogen converts it into helium and then uh, blows it out in solar wind now once it's traveling from uh, basically sun to moon it's traveling at around eight light minutes of distance it's getting bombarded by what we classify as cosmic ray now cosmic ray is high energy particle so that high en energy particle plus helium equals helium-3 that's the source of helium-3 sun is not giving helium-3 it's just that traveling car of course uh, the helium-3 is an isotope so if it's creating billion ton one or two ton would be like you know helium-3 by just design or by random cons chances but most of the sources like once it's traveling getting hit by cosmic rays you're getting helium-3 now helium-3 it's very um lightweight of course it's a helium it's lightweight so earth's magnetic field given the fact that it's charged and given the fact that cosmic ray, uh, cosmic ray is flat out blocked by our magnetic shield and the, whatever gets through is a very low power like in space you are getting bombarded by like a nuclear cannon and earth's atmosphere you are barely getting hit by a gunshot so the power drop is significant enough we're not going to get enough of it however on the moon because it still has gravity you have to have gravity otherwise you will not be able to hold helium-3 so it's getting bombarded by helium-3 but again it does not have an atmosphere so it will flat out not bounce off however the gravity is low so most of it blows away but some get trapped into the surface this, this is one thing you have to understand you can't mine uh, basically moon for helium-3 uh, as in like you're going to dig a hole and then you know uh, make tunnels and same way we mine coal copper and all that you have to have basically uh, surface level it's just surface level you have to understand of course if we go there and we really want to mine a lot of it, we can create magnetic scoops uh, using magnetic scoop and you can directly collect it however uh, as of now if you just go there and you're like okay i'm gonna mine it you have to mine it on the surface and how deep basically one inch or two inch don't expect like a helium-3 to be there like of course if some part of the moon basically is high enough let's say some part of the crater uh, rim of the crater that is high enough and it's getting exposed constantly there you might find okay helium-3 uh, goes bit deep but you don't expect it to be like you know digging trenches and like you know 100 feet deep 500 feet deep it's not that deep so that's the source of helium-3 now here's the interesting part there is not much of it 
so first it's only on the surface and then there is very 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 low density of it because you have to know helium 3 is not stable to trap helium 3 you need very high uh, gravity well like you will find more helium 3 in jupiter of course it has much higher gravity so that's the whole point and to give you a context of it how low density we are talking about we are not talking about something parts per million we are talking about something parts per billion it's that rare to give you a context like easy to understand context sea water has more gold just now think about it we are talking about mining sea water for gold of course you will get gold you will get gold and in lab conditions we still get it it's just not enough that's the whole point to give you a even uh, simplified only one movie came out that i couldn't even say like yeah they at least try to portray what difficulty would be it's like moon the movie moon and it had like giant uh, basically like bulldozer kind of thing and this was uh, like flattening out the entire lunar surface you have to do that to get even a usable amount to give you a context uh, early estimates puts around less than 30 tons for america so if you can get 50 ton america is set for years per year so and we gonna uh, you know flatten out like around 100 km square you will get barely few grams so this is one thing you have to understand there is not enough of it it's like people um, many people they like we gonna send a rover and we gonna mine it yeah your rover will collect it you will detect it it's just yeah five to six atoms of it was found or one microgram one mole or 50 moles or things of that nature it's just not enough because moon gravity is not strong enough so question becomes can we do it short answer no why simply because if we can have deuterium tritium cycle which will have much before we will have like helium 3 cycle what would be the point helium 3 only benefit it allows us is simply uh, basically making our power plant smaller yeah your power plant is now smaller you simply can get directly will it allow us to miniaturize it not that much don't expect like a very small miniaturized compact reactor that's not going to happen and deuterium tritium is like we are almost there like we have tokamaks that achieve it like we have something that achieves it. it's like okay we are there we are just not at break even point but at least we are like in the same ballpark something is happening so there is and once we reach deuterium tritium and here's the uh, thing you have to understand once of uh, deuterium i think we have infinite amount like sea water has infinite amount our tritium we don't have enough basically if we start using it and try to feed ourselves we're going to run out in 3000 years but here's the interesting thing uh, because neutron is being created in the outer casings of this reactor we will put uh, lithium and lithium will act as a breeder uh, ground so lithium will be turned into a specific kind of isotope that isotope will uh, give out tritium so that way we are creating the new generation of the reactors they are called as a breeder reactor that's what they are doing using the extra neutron to basically fertilize uh, lithium so that way they can get continuous supply of tritium so that way we will literally have uh, infinite uh, nuclear power so once you have that what's the point of helium 3 yeah your reactor would be smaller but again we don't even have this properly how the heck you are expecting a smaller reactor for helium 3 and if you really want to like if you really want to hey i want to use space to solve earth's problem awesome here's a simple video about it space solar all the technology needed for space solar is already there and uh, japan is also trying it and they should have a demonstration project done by 2030 35 if if we are lucky so technology in that case space solar which can provide 100% of earth's power with modern technology not some magic technology we do not have with modern te technology that we are using in small parts every day anyway is just bigger version of it is like that like well, that can be done today like if we start today we can do this helium 3 is like i have no idea like how many people do not know like a neutronic nuclear fusion requires much higher ignition temperature and every video you see about tokamak they will the first thing they will say yeah we we just can't get it hot enough like 25 million degrees celsius is not hot enough just imagine this is at 13.7 <laughs> you were talking about like I, i don't know even 2 or 5 billion degrees celsius you need to ignite helium 3 so this kind of frustration is like this is common knowledge this is first thing you teach in uh, they teach you in nuclear physics it's like <sighs> so this was my presentation about helium 3 craze and on the moon i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike i would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching